Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So, uh, I went on the 6th of February, and I searched all night to find the cheapest set of coilovers I could find off eBay, just because my car sits like a monster truck, and this is just temporary until I get my actual one-piece design strut uh, with the adjustable damper and all that stuff. So they, they'll be coilovers, but they won't be sleeves, coilover sleeves, like these. Um, I just got them. It is the 8th. Um, but I did order them on a Saturday night, which technically the order went through Saturday night. So Sunday they couldn't ship it out. So it took about four or five days to get here. Um, business days that is, which isn't bad, but I paid $35, like $35.15 or something. It's super cheap. And, uh, I already opened them just to make sure everything was here. I have one of them set up how I'm going to have it on the car. They actually have numbers where you can actually adjust it. And you see these holes up top? These are for Allen screws to go through, which they provide right here. Let me show you. This actually keeps them steady and in the spot so they don't clunk around, because that's what you hear with the cheap, poorly done coilovers on Hondas or any car. And they've got these little rubber seals that go around the strut and they slide onto here. This will slide into them and it'll kind of help stabilize it. That way this thing's not spinning around in there while you're driving and making all, all kinds of chatter and noise. The quality is what I expected. Pretty good, uh, decent, you know, coilover quality. And as long as you do it right, these things can last up to like six or seven years. Um, I've personally seen it with my own eyes. They might get a little bit of rust when they uh, are installed properly. Uh, not installed properly, sorry. But uh, they'll get nicks in them and then the, the, start, the paint will, it's called rust jack, where the uh, paint gets jacked off of the metal. Um, you can sandblast them, repaint them, throw them back on, they're good as new again. But uh, these right here, they will be my temporaries until I can afford all this. With the bank loan going on, uh, the shop, we're still trying to get the shop. Um, we're having an issue at the bank. I went to a couple different banks, still same issue. Credit's obviously going to be the problem. We make enough money every month to pay it, but no one's going to give us a chance, so we're still trying to find out how we're doing it. But uh, I came with the tools to adjust. You know, so you can tighten them and all that. Uh, I'll show you guys how to do that stuff if you don't already know. Put the Allens in. Get these installed on the car. Pull the struts off the car first. Decompress the spring. I'll show you how to do all of that stuff. Um, I usually use the car's weight to decompress the struts. But I actually have a spring compressor. So I'll actually be using the spring compressor to show you how to use it. You can get the spring compressor really cheap at Harbor Freight or any parts store really. Um... But yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, go get out there in the garage and get to work on these. All right, one of the first things you're going to want to do is obviously you're going to want to jack the car up and support it with jack stands. Uh, after you do that, you'll take the center cap off to expose the lug nuts. Now after you got it to, down to where the lug nuts are exposed, you'll go ahead and uh, loosen the lug nuts up, take the wheel off. All right, now that you're in here, you're gonna to wanna to undo the 17 millimeter. That is right here. It's a nut on this side and it's a bolt on this side. So you'll wanna use a, two wrenches or a wrench and a ratchet, or if you just have an impact, try just using the impact. So we'll get started. Once you get that done, there'll be two 10 millimeters that go here and hold it to the steering knuckle for the wheel hub. 
you'll want to undo those tins because they hold the brake line to it. And on other models, these will be bolted to the actual strut itself. But um, you'll go ahead and get into the engine bay. We have four 14 millimeters to undo, and we'll get started doing that. All right, so we have these two 14 millimeters to undo, and then we'll have one on this side and one on this side. It's best to have a ratchet wrench for the ones on the sides. All right, now that we've done that, we'll go back to the wheel well. All right, as you can see, we've got the two off the sides. Now the strut can come right up out of here. You might have to push down on the spindle to kind of help get it out of the fender area. We'll go ahead and uh, loosen this up a little bit. That way I can actually fit these in there because right now they're they don't really want to fit. It's kind of a tight squeeze, so they won't get in. So we'll go ahead and loosen it up a little bit. And you're not going to want to get it too far because then it'll pop off. So that should be enough for us to get these in. All right, they still don't fit in, so we are going to improvise, and I'll show you a trick that I've used for many years to get these uh, springs off without a spring compressor. Okay, as you can see, I put the strut back in the car. Just lightly tighten these bolts down. I didn't put this on, doesn't need to be on, but as you can see, it's it can't really go anywhere, so when I decompress that spring, it's gonna pop really hard. This will just shoot it down. This way it's kind of controlled. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that's that. So now we just take it right back out and the spring comes right back off. I want to show you how this goes back on the proper way because this is where people screw stuff up. This piece goes over like that, okay? If it's a completely factory strut, and this washer goes on top. Then this piece, this is called the top hat, it will go on top of that. And then the washer goes on top, and then the nut goes on top. If you don't do it right, it will be so messed up because you don't necessarily have to have this piece on or this washer for example but this metal one here you have to have on and I'll show you what happens if you don't have it on okay you see the little ridge there that's this thing is a stopper it stops going down that far if you don't have it on it's just gonna push all of this stuff up like that after you have it all installed back on the car so definitely definitely if anything just make sure to use the stopper it has to go on like that so now that we got that out of the way the bump stop I always take them out just because if you want to keep them in keep them in but it causes issues with the coilover so I always just take them out now this is a really good straight shape strut it's kind of hard to push down which means it won't ride bouncy and it'll ride really smooth. It's very slow to come back up, if you can see that. Anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the O-rings on, and then we'll go down to putting the coilover on. Another thing is, I never see these metal top hats, actually, this top part's going into the top hats, I never see people actually using them. So I'm gonna try to find a way to use it this time just because 
the holes are usually too small and people just say, oh, doesn't fit and throw it off to the side. You can drill the hole out a little bit and then it should go right on perfectly fine. So we're gonna go ahead and get these little rubbers, rubbers on here and then uh, go from there. Now I always install it this way. Most people install it this way, I don't. I like to install it to where the numbers are up, like that. You can see it's kind of solid on there. That's really good, that's what, that's what you want. You want it to be really solid. I'm only installing two, just because I don't like to use all of these, because I like to keep some leftovers. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Allen screws in, tighten them down, and then we'll see where we need to adjust all this stuff. Okay, another note to make real quick is this right here, this is the back side. You won't see this side. You see how my numbers are off to the side? That's not good. So I'm gonna loosen these up and turn it to where when you pull your wheel off, you can see these numbers. It's also another really important thing to remember. This is how it should look when you're looking at it. This point should face the front of the car. Go over your str or your CV shaft facing the front, like an arrow pointing to the front of the car. As you can see, my numbers aren't. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to where my numbers are facing, to where when you take the wheel off, you'll be able to see them. Like that. Now you can actually see the numbers and the adjustments. We'll go ahead and tighten the Allens back down be done with this one. Nice and solid, not going anywhere. So now we'll get the coil over on, like so, and uh, put the rest of it back on. But first I'm going to drill this top hat out. Alright, as you can see this top hat here, let me face this up, it actually stops where the stopper went. So now we don't have to worry about that stopper in there. So we can go ahead and put the top hat on, like this. And if you had short struts, it would look something similar to that. But these are factory struts, they're not short struts. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rubber piece back on, put the washer back on the top, and then we'll put the nut on, which I gotta go get. All right, there it is. It's ready to go back in the car. All we do is bolt it right back up in, and then we start on the next one.
it's just a little bit too close. I'm not even gonna be able to fit my finger in there. Which that's what most Honda guys go for is that really slammed look. I don't just because I like functionality. This is not functional. So I will have to raise it up just a little bit till I can get some daily drivability. Cause I don't know if you guys have seen, which I'll go show you in a second, my driveway, this wouldn't even make it out. So let's go look at my driveway. It's hilly, so I can't go out that way. And there's got a big dip here, and then a dip over there, and then a big dip back there. So there's no way I would be able to do that with this being that low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and raise this up just a little bit so we can get some gap in there. A little gap. It does have a little bit of a gap but it might still not be enough just because I'm gonna rub fender a lot. And a lot of people's solution is just to roll the fender. These fenders are crappy, I don't care if they're rolled or not. But the back, I don't like rolling because it's possibility to make it rust and crack and so on and so forth. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna do all four of them, make sure they're all four done and see where it sits and then try to go from there. I will be getting smaller tires eventually which will help a lot with this rubbing issue. Um, but this little gap here might be good and just because it's a little stiffer It might work so who knows so I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them show you how to do the back ones And then I'll just knock the other two sides out and uh, this will be a little bit video faster video for you So let's get to it You're gonna want to undo one of these bolts a lot of people like undoing this one But it usually breaks off for me so you're gonna want to be careful back Undo the 14, I'd, I'd probably undo this one um, and loosen this up if you can, but these usually tend to break off, so you're gonna have to be very careful back here. These rubbers are really weak. So go ahead and do that, and uh, then I'll probably just go inside the car and loosen it, just cause I, it takes longer to do the uh, uh, spring compressor. So let's go ahead and hit these bolts. All right, so I actually just decided I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use a spring compressor, just so you know. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get these, you got these little pins, I'm gonna pull them back on both of them, and you're gonna wanna set them in here, into these slots, like that. And then on the next one, I try to go as far down as possible so you can get the most compression out of it. And you'll do the same thing on the other side. Once you get it snugged up pretty good, it should look something like that. You can do these on top if you want. I like to do them on the bottom, but it's whatever, it still works the same. It's a 19 millimeter, a three quarter wrench or socket, if you can get a socket on it, and then just compress it. wrench 
put it in there. Just loosen it up. Be careful because it could still be under pressure. But if you did it right, it shouldn't be under too much. See? That's it. A little pop is all you got. Now you're going to want to pry that up. And there you go. Pull your spring off. And we can take this off since now we know we can use the other. Then same procedure, put everything on it, put it back in the car. doesn't look bad the way it is but there's no way that's functional there's no way so I will have to raise the front but like I said I'm gonna go ahead and do the entire car then I'll see where it sits and adjust from there so sit tight for a few the driver's side as you can see it's kind of rubbing the tire so that's not acceptable uh, up front it's rubbing the fender pretty bad whenever I try to take a right turn it rubs pretty bad but the passenger side not a single noise from and it looks a lot better so I'm gonna raise it up to about where the passenger side is and call it good until I get smaller tires I know a lot of you guys are like, that's still a lot of gap, but you know what? I like functionality, so function over form any freaking day of the week. Hate this stupid driveway, and this town is crap. If you ever drove it through Hutchinson, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, driver's side raised up a little bit more, and we'll be good to go. Thanks for watching the video. Like, subscribe, share if you haven't already, and uh, there'll be more videos coming, especially once I get the shop. So, definitely stay tuned, everyone. Have a good day.